And good morning, everyone, and happy Thursday morning to you. Great to have you back. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma, and this is my, what I call, my morning musings. I'm sharing a few thoughts from the Word of God, some, uh, enjoying some great coffee this morning. We are currently studying the eschatology of the parables of Jesus. We've been spending a good bit of time on Jesus' second parable. It's direct, re, directly related to the first, but it is so critical to understand how Jesus' parables set the tone, set the narrative for the entire biblical story of eschatology. You know, it's absolutely strange to me that I have seen, there, there are many commentators, uh, Lightfoot is one of them, Lightfoot goes through the parables and just does a marvelous job of showing the original context, the original audience, the original meaning. He comes to Paul and the epistles in which the same identical things are discussed and Lightfoot almost sees no connection, as if Paul was teaching something radically different from what Jesus taught in the parables. It's just so strange. Well, anyway, <clears throat> in this last installment on Jesus' parable of the wheat and the tares, the time of the harvest, one of the things that is truly critical, truly fascinating for us to see is that there would not have been a Jew alive who heard Jesus speak who would not see that parable as a reference to the ultimate fulfillment of their feast days, of their festal calendar. Israel had seven feast days in their festal calendar. You, uh, or it began with Passover. You had the Feast of Unleavened Bread, you had the Feast of Weeks, and you had Pentecost. The Jews understood, and the New Testament clearly teaches, that Israel's feast days were shadows of good things, better things, that were, as Paul expresses it in Colossians 2.16, about to come. You see, when Paul wrote, they were still shadows of things that were about to come. They had not yet been fully fulfilled. But here's the deal. The first four of the feast days are clearly fulfilled in Jesus' personal ministry, his life, his death, his resurrection, and on the day of Pentecost. There are few scholars, few commentators who disagree with that. Between Pentecost and the last three feast days was a period of four months. The rabbis called that the time of waiting for judgment. Because at the time, or at the end of that four-month period, you had what they called Rosh Hashanah the Feast of Trumpets, the time of the judgment. Connected to Rosh Hashanah was the atonement. <clears throat> now, folks, very clearly, the atonement was not consummated at the cross because in Jewish thought and in Jewish writings, the atonement is the climax of the judgment. Judgment did not happen at the cross. Following immediately upon the atonement was, guess what, Sukkot, the Feast of Booths, the Feast of Harvest and in Gathering, foreshadowing the resurrection as Jesus explains it in Matthew chapter 13. So any good Jewish audience, when Jesus told this parable, would instantly understand that Jesus was telling them that the end of their age, the end of what age? The end of the age represented by, symbolized the end of the age in which the feast days served as types and foreshadowings of the end of that age. That is when those feast days would be fulfilled. That is when what they foreshadowed would become a reality. Now, I want you to notice that Jesus in this parable is anticipating the arrival of the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is like. What would follow? 
the harvest. Well, the Jews, and I'm so appreciative to my good, a good friend Jim Wade for pointing this out to me, getting me started in my studies on this, following the completion of the last three feast days was the festival of Shemini Atzerat, the festival of the eighth day, the celebration of the fulfillment as it were, the celebration of the survival of those last three feast days. It was the greatest feast in some sense because it said they've come through judgment, the atonement is finished, they are now dwelling in the presence of God, the harvest is complete. All of this anticipatory. And the feast of Shemini, Atzerat, <clears throat> the feast of the eighth day, foreshadowed the ingathering into the eternal kingdom of God, life in the presence of God. Listen, folks. If the feast days of Israel, including Rosh Hashanah, Atonement, and Sukkot, if they have not been completely fulfilled, we do not live in the presence of God. We do not have salvation. The atonement has not been completed yet. Jesus, in this parable, by telling the parable of the harvest, Sukkot was anticipating the fulfillment of Israel's final feast. And once again, if it hasn't been fulfilled, then every jot every tittle of the entirety of Israel's Old Covenant law, including the feast days, remains valid and binding today. If the law of Moses, including the new moons, the feast days, and the Sabbaths, has been done away, then this harvest, at the end of the age of Matthew 13, has been fulfilled. And the followers of Messiah now live and enjoy and celebrate Shemini Atzerat, the eighth day, the new creation of God. Oh my goodness, this is such fascinating stuff. Don't have time to develop it more in this segment. I just want to thank you for joining me on this morning's uh, morning musings. I want you to go to my website, get, get my material on the feast day, excuse me, on the parables of Jesus. 2006, Preter's Pilgrim Weekday, the eschatology of the parables. 32 lesson series on the parables of Jesus by Don K. Preston. Order one, order both. Mention that you saw the offer on YouTube or Facebook and I'll refund your shipping. Remember, if the harvest of Matthew 13 has not been fulfilled, we have no salvation today, and the entirety of Israel's festal calendar, the new moons, the feast days, and the Sabbaths are still binding, and there's still shadows of good things that have not yet arrived. We have a choice. Old covenant new moons, feast days, and Sabbaths, fulfillment in Christ, enjoyment of the eighth day, and the kingdom of God. Thanks for joining me. You have a fantastic weekend, Lord willing. We'll see you on Monday.